Welcome everyone, my name is Jacob Hess and I'm here to take you from zero to engineer. Let's look at a really cool example here. I actually love this. So if I had this kind of information or this kind of explanation a long time ago, my mind would have been blown because it would have made it all so clear to me. So what we're going to do is we're going to see what happens to this data as it travels through the network from the host on the left to the host on the right. But before we do that, we need to identify what's going on here with, this, with these two different networks. So we have one network on the left, 192.168.100.0, and we have another network on the right, which is 10.10.10.0, two different private networks that we're connecting together over this router. And each one of our hosts on these networks have specific IP addresses and specific MAC addresses. Remember, every node on a network has an IP address and a MAC address, right? They have two addresses. So your host has both of these, and the host on the left is 192.168.100.2, MAC address with all A's, just for an example, that's not a real MAC address. And then the, the host on the right has IP 10.10.10.2, and it has all B's, just for simplicity's sake. Now we do have to understand what the IP address and MAC address is of the router as well. Normally we only think of routers in terms of IP, but they do have MAC addresses. And the router is called the default gateway for a network whenever a computer needs to go to it to get to another network. So for example, this computer here on the left, if it needs to communicate with the network on the right, it's going to have to talk to its default gateway to get over to that network. That's what the default gateway is. It's the gateway to get to other networks. It's the router that will get you out to other networks, like the interwebs. That's what your default gateway is. And you'll see in your IP config, you have one, and that's basically your router's IP, right, for your house. All right, so that's what default gateway is. But we do have IP addresses and MAC addresses assigned to each individual interface of the router, not just one. This router doesn't have just one IP. It specializes in routing traffic from one network to another. So it's going to have multiple IP addresses. And again, each, in, each IP address will also have a MAC address associated with it for those particular interfaces. And we're going to see how this relates as the traffic travels through. Okay, so let's look at that now. We understand now we have two different local area networks. We have the 192.168.100.0 and the 10.10.10.0 and host uh, 192.168.100.2 is going to send a message to 10.10.10.2. So it says, I want to send this data, this data up here, whatever it is, we might find out what it is actually, but I want to send this data to 10.10.10.2. Okay, so let's see what happens. So it's going to take this data and before it can send it out, it first needs to create an IP packet. So this IP packet is going to have the destination address. It knows that the host it wants to send it to is 10.10.10.2. So it puts that on the IP packet destination, right? It also includes its own IP address in the IP packet as well as the source. So in the header, we have the source, which is 192.168.100.2, and the destination, which is 10.10.10.2. So it creates that packet and it's, it stuffs all the data in there, all right? So now it has this packet. Now what does it need to do with this packet before it can send it out onto the ethernet LAN? Well, it needs to create a frame. So it creates a frame and it's going to put the MAC information, right? It's gonna put the destination MAC address. Well, what is the destination MAC address gonna be? It actually doesn't know the MAC address of this computer, 10.10.10.2, because it's on a different network. It only knows the MAC addresses of computers on its local network. But what it does have is a default gateway, and this computer knows the MAC address of its default gateway. See this gig00 interface here has a MAC address of all C's. So it's going to actually put a destination MAC address on the MAC header of this frame as all C's here, so that it will actually get to the default gateway. And it knows to do this because it knows its default gateway is this address, and it knows its MAC, all right? So it knows this information. So it has this frame and it's putting the addressing information on it and now it has this packet as well and it stuffs the packet into the frame, right? So now we just have a frame. We took the data, put it into the packet, then we put, took the packet, took it, put it into the frame. Just like we talked about before, but we're excluding the TCP part for simplicity purposes. We're just saying that it's already happened. We're just going from data to packet to frame. All right, so we've stuffed it all in there and now since we have a destination MAC address of all C's to the default gateway, we're gonna see how it actually gets there. So the computer sends it out onto the LAN 
and it goes to the switch. Now the switch actually takes that frame and looks at it and it opens up the header and it says, oh, hmm, I see CC, 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 CC as the destination MAC address. So I'm just going to go ahead and send it out of my port that is connected to that MAC address because remember it has a table. It knows exactly where this router is connected. So it sends it out the port that's connected to that router. Boom, it makes it to the router. Then the router goes, oh, I have some information here. Let me go ahead and look at that. And it takes the frame. It analyzes the frame's MAC header. It says, oh, that frame's MAC header is CC, 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 CC. See? And it knows, oh, this frame is for me. So let me open this up further. So it opens it up further. And what it finds is the IP packet, right? And now it looks at the packet header information and it sees that the destination IP in the IP packet header is 10.10.10.2. And it says, oh, okay, well, let's see. I know where that is. So then it takes that packet. It doesn't change the destination IP address. It leaves that the same. And it puts it back into a frame. And on this new frame, it's a brand new frame, what it does is it changes the MAC address header to all Bs, B, 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 so that it can be sent off to the host. And then it says, all right, got the frame repackaged, and I'm sending it off to the host. And it sends it out to the network. Then it makes it to the switch. The switch then has a look at that frame as well. It says, oh, let's see. The frame header is B, 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 B. And it says, I know where that is. That's connected to my port gigabit ethernet 0 slash 10 and then it sends it out uh, that port that it has I just made that port number up right I don't have it on the diagram but it sends it out directly to the host and then the host receives it and the host is like oh sweet I got a frame let's see and it opens it up and it looks at the frame header the MAC address header and it sees that it's all B's right and it says oh that must be for me so it opens up the frame completely getting to the IP packet and then it looks at the IP packet destination and it says, oh, cool, this is for me. It's for 10.10.10.2. And it came from 192.168.100.2, my buddy over there. All right, this must have something interesting in it. So then it takes the data out of that packet and it can then analyze it. Now, what does it do with the packet and frame now? Well, it destroys those things and it just is left with the data. And now we can say, hmm, let me go ahead and take this data and figure out what it means. And it'll run it through its applications or whatever the data was meant to go through. In this case, it was a JPEG image of a flying cat. <laughs> a flying cat. Why do people keep sending me images of cats from the interwebs? I don't know. I don't know. But that did make me laugh. So thank you, 192.168.100.2. I appreciate the message. And that's how it works, guys. That's how packets go to frames, which go to packets again, which go to frames again, which sometimes go to packets again, and then go to frames again, and then get decapsulated by the host eventually, where it can pull the data out and find that really cool picture of the flying cat. So that is how the communication actually works. Jacob Hess here. Thank you guys for viewing the video. I hope you really enjoyed it. And I'd also like to remind you that if you're truly serious about your career in information technology, be sure to check out our Career Blueprint and Engineer Training Program at www.zerotoengineer.com.